I'm here at Alfitronic headquarters where a little bit over a year ago, Alfitronic took occupancy of this facility and very quickly started to dominate the North American charging market in what I'm sure in years coming is going to be a case study for MBA students because it is absolutely ridiculous what this hardworking team at Alfitronic has accomplished in a frightening amount of uh, speed. And everyone else has basically gotten to the point where, you know, the war is over, Alfitronics has won. And the rest of the CPOs are licking their wounds and trying to figure out what the heck just happened. Let's go ahead and get into it. So the story of Alpitronic in the United States starts back, I think it was in 2022, a hypercharger was spotted in Rock Hill, South Carolina at a Circle K test site. And it got on several YouTube videos, myself included. I went over there and did a collab with a fellow YouTuber here in the Charlotte area where he charged his EV6. I charged my Cadillac Lyric at the site. And uh, when I was there, I noticed that the, um, the plate at the base of the charger indicated it was a test unit. So it wasn't like someone was able to purchase one and, and install it. This was a unique one-off installation. But at the time, it was the fastest charger in the United States, 400 kilowatts. And I think it is worth mentioning, taking a step back to ask why Alpitronic hyperchargers were so exciting to EV enthusiasts during that time. It's like, oh, we got an Alpitronic hypercharger in our, in our uh, country now. And I think it's a little bit uh, multi-pronged why people were excited about Alpitronic hyperchargers. I mean, we had the Tesla supercharger network. It wasn't open to other uh, OEM uh, car manufacturers at the time. And uh, so Alpitronic was seen as a way of solving the charging problem in the United States. And it had many things going for it. It had the brand recognition. And I think also because that brand recognition was in Europe where electric vehicle adoption was further on, the thought that was, hey, if we could just get Alpitronic here, we would be cool like Europe and we would accelerate our EV adoption. I think there was some of that at play in the uh, cocktail that was making us so excited for Alpitronic hyperchargers. Also the high speed, 400 kilowatts was unmatched at the time. Uh, the silicon carbide rectifiers uh, for near lossless energy transfer from AC to DC and good cable management. So the uh, way with these trickling arms in order to pull the cables out to either side of the car. All those things combined to make a very attractive and sexy uh, solution for EV charging. They also had very large screens that were not prone to burn in and had statistics on the UI that were able to be um, uh, Pre presented to the EV drivers. The charging curve obviously was something that everyone was very excited about. But just the nerd information, the um, very fast charging, the silicon carbide, the trickling arms, the high speed, uh, the fact that it was coming from Europe, all these things were playing into the mix, the reliability aspect of uh, what Alpitronic's brand is known for in Europe. All these things were kind of making the excitement around Alpitronic hyperchargers in the EV community coming to the United States very pronounced. And so this one site in Rock Hill, South Carolina, definitely got a lot of attention, myself included. Then through the Biden administration's insistence on Build America, Buy America, Alpitronic, instead of uh, just shipping things across the Atlantic uh, to the States, set up offices in North Carolina, specifically Charlotte, North Carolina, close to my home. And they uh, leased or purchased a building, I'm not quite sure the specifics around the property, a um, location in Southern Charlotte at a um, pretty uh, up and coming location. It is not in downtown or what we call uptown here in Charlotte, uh, but still a up and coming location that was uh, pretty trendy. And that was the indication that they were coming to the United States. They also started a um, manufacturing facility where they could comply with Build America, Buy America requirements for the tax rebates associated with the chargers in Wisconsin. 
Then, let's progress a little bit. So that was November 2023 when Alpitronic actually showed up in the United States. But, you know, we I personally thought it was going to be, you know, a couple of years before we started to see anything out of them. But then, IANA happened. And with the IANA uh, founding, shortly after, during the process of them building out their first couple of sites, Alpitronic hyperchargers were suddenly started to be spotted on the properties that were getting built out for IANA stations. And then IANA just came clean and said, yes, we're using Alpitronic hyperchargers. And they showed some of their chargers that were getting wrapped with IANA branding. Um, as Alpitronic hyperchargers, they were in renderings, and then the excitement really started to spike. Oh my goodness, we have IANA, this major CPO, coming to the United States, and they are going to be all in on Alpitronic hyperchargers. Okay, so that was win number one. It was basically a greenfield because IANA was from a ground up um, CPO. They were starting from scratch, they were um, a, a startup CPO. After that, though, in rapid succession, multiple wins that were um, conquest wins started to occur. And the first of which was Mercedes-Benz high-powered charging, which had been married to ChargePoint, uh, the ChargePoint Express Plus systems at all their stations that were getting built through 2023 and in the beginning of 2024. I visited many of them. They were at um, the Mercedes-Benz uh, uh, headquarter located, North American headquarter location in Sandy Springs, Georgia. They had a beautiful build and also at uh, multiple Bucky's locations. Uh, all were standardized on ChargePoint hardware and it looked, you know, there's nothing wrong with the ChargePoint hardware. It was able to output um, up to 400 kilowatts and um, they had a very reliable way of sharing power among the different dispensers and everything. So, you know, bus bars and uh, it was a very uh, solid solution. But we saw Albitronic hyperchargers starting to get put into Mercedes-Benz locations. And that was a conquest. So ChargePoint started to lose um, orders to Albitronic. So that alone was very newsworthy but wait there's more it was the bad news keeps coming for the other hardware manufacturers uh, bp pulse uh, started to install epitronic hyperchargers at their locations at gigahubs and also they were getting spotted at the travel centers of america builds that were getting announced i myself went to one in jacksonville florida with a ribbon cutting um where the ceo of bp pulse North America, Sujay Sharma was doing the officiating of the ceremonies and actually cutting of the ribbon. And there was all Alpitronic hyperchargers. So another conquest win because BB Pulse had relationships with other uh, hardware manufacturers, but all of a sudden, boom, there was Alpitronic hyperchargers at the front and center of the new BB Pulse image. So for the press releases that were going out, they were all Alpitronic. People at Paul said didn't actually stop there. They were putting them into the Giga Hubs at the airports. They were putting them into the travel centers of America, but they were also putting them on private properties. So pe people can go to BP Pulse and ask like they're operating an electric fleet and they need charging on their property. So BP Pulse was actually putting Alpitronic hyperchargers on private property and operating them for uh, those fleet operators. So the dominoes kept falling. Then in um, the late 2024 time frame, although Walmart Corp was giving signals that they were getting ready to move forward with a charge point build at all their locations, there was a very abrupt pivot. And in the Dallas Fort Worth Metroplex, we started to see Alpitronic hyperchargers going into the ground. And in short succession, stations started to open and Alpitronic hyperchargers were again front and center on the press releases that were coming out of uh, Walmart Court for this new Walmart Energy um, electric 
vehicle charging station bills that are going into Walmart properties and Walmart supercenters around the country. And that's going gangbusters too. We're seeing them all over the place now. We're seeing them now in the uh, Dallas-Fort Worth Metroplex. We're seeing them in Phoenix. We're seeing them in uh, Oklahoma City. Uh, there's also getting, uh, there's permits to getting spotted in other states as well. Definitely go to Landon at the Arkansas E-Traveler in order to stay abreast of that. Tons of things going on with Walmart and front and center, again, Alpitronic Hyperchargers, almost exclusively. I don't think there is um, other hardware seen yet. There might be some getting put into uh, the Phoenix locations. I think that's a little bit unclear whether or not uh, they're moving ahead with the uh, different hardware, which I think is the ABB uh, new next generation uh, chargers in Phoenix, but we'll have to see. Still, the news keeps coming. Um, more people are starting to look at Alpitronic. And pretty soon I was starting to wonder if Tesla themselves were going to start to look at Alpitronic because there was very few people left not looking at Alpitronic. For instance, Electrify America also started to get spotted with Alpitronic hyperchargers on their property. They've been doing uh, network refreshes of older hardware to updated um, hardware in order to increase reliability at some of their older stations. And two stations were spotted uh, to have Alpitronic hyperchargers in the ground with Electrify America branding. So now we have IANA, we have Mercedes-Benz High Power Charging, we have BP Pulse, we have uh, Walmart, and we have Electrify America. Doesn't stop there. I mean, this is craziness. We're talking like in one year, normally it takes 18 months to put a charger in the ground and get it commissioned. But in less than a year, Alpitronic hyperchargers are getting seen all over the place. I went to the ACT Expo and there were multiple um, fleet operators uh, doing uh, uh, fleet depot operators. Uh, specifically, Green Lane has opened their flagship location in Colton, California. And again, Alpitronic hyperchargers are underneath canopies in order for tractor trailers to pull in and get a 400 kilowatt uh, charge. Um, in order to continue their delivery routes. So um, Alpitronic hyperchargers are getting put into uh, fleet scenarios, are getting put into um, the light duty fleets like uh, BP Pulse, Iona, Mercedes, Benz, Walmart, and Electrify America. And um, it, the, it just keeps rolling. It's absolutely crazy how fast Alpitronic has become a has solidified their dominance in North America. They basically started from a dead stop to being the number one deployer of high-powered charging in the United States in one year's time. That's absolutely crazy, absolutely amazing. There was a interview between Kyle Connor and Brandon Flash, who works now for Alpitronic, at the ACT Expo. Let's go to that, where Brendan describes how much uh, penetration Albitronic has had to date. Unbelievable pace with yes. all the major customers. You can list them yeah, off. EA, IANA, BP. Yeah. List goes Mercedes. On. Yeah, that's right. Mercedes has gone <laughs> yes. full send with these. And we have a couple coming to Colorado, which will be great with Mercedes. But we need more in the Midwest. So more CPOs yeah. buy these things. Yeah, I mean, they're just going to be <laughs> everywhere across the US. You can okay. already go around the entire Texas Triangle. So. DFW, San Antonio, Houston, entirely on hyperchargers. That's the scale that they're being deployed at already. It's so fast. And we just started shipping them in volume late last year, and we're only in end of April 2025. <laughs> yeah, it's crazy. So, I mean, our customers have just been deploying at scale that I don't think anyone has seen before outside of Tesla. No, I certainly have not. And I'm excited because uh, yeah. these things work. In Europe, this is the charger. They're yeah. on every corner in Europe, and, and it works, and they've always worked. Yeah, and they're going to work here and they have been. Yeah. And I mean, we have some stats on the wall there. I don't know if you already showed it, but no. we actually have more ports deployed than Tesla and we don't have any chargers in China. That's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> well, as always, big shout out to you guys for just kind of killing it. Yeah. <laughs> There's no way. It's been it. a long time coming. We hit, yeah. we're hiring and assembling the dream team. And I think yep. uh, that's a big part of the success that we have is that we have a really good team here. Yep. So I don't know what the future holds, but if I had to put my chips down on someone's number, it would definitely be Alpitronic. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video and thank you very much for watching.